United we stand, however divided we fall. Welcome to the Sukkis Perspective. Sukkis, a holiday of happiness and unity. We celebrate the Yom Tov of Sukkis in commemoration of the miraculous Anane HaKovid, clouds of glory that God provided the Jewish people throughout their journey in the desert. We observe the Yom Tov of Sukkis by eating, drinking, and spending as much time in the Sukkah. As the Pesach says, Basukkis teshvu shivas yamim, kol ezrach b'Yisrael yeshvu basukkis. For seven days, all the children of Israel shall live in the Sukkah. We also bind together the Arba Minim, four different types of fruit, an esrik, which is a citrus, a lulav, which is a palm branch, three hadasim, which are myrtle twigs, and two aravais, which are willow branches. As the Pesach says, Ulakachtem lachem b'yem arishan pri eitz hadar, kapas tamarm, vanaf eitz arvas, va'arve nachal u'samachtem lafnei Hashem lekecha shivas yamim. You shall take for yourselves fruit of a hadar tree, a palm branch, a myrtle twig, and the willows of the river, and rejoice before God for seven days. On each day, except for Shabbos, we make a bracha over them and shake them in each direction. There is a well-known question brought down by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rambam Mishnah Torah writes many rules on the Arba Minim. Regarding the Lulav, Esrik, and Hadas, he has extensive regulations on their origin, size, and color. However, concerning the Arava, he just writes one line regarding its tip. Why does the Arava not have the same in-depth rules and regulations as the other three fruit? Why is it seemingly looked over? The Medrash explains that each fruit of the Arba Minim represents the various personalities that comprise the Jewish nation. And it is this intrinsic unity that we emphasize on Sukkot through the binding together of the Arba Minim. The Esrik, which can be eaten and has a fabulous aroma, represents the Jew who studies Torah and keeps its mitzvahs diligently. The Lulav, which has dates that grow alongside it that can be eaten but does not have any aroma, represents the Jew who studies Torah but does not follow its mitzvahs as diligently. The hadas, which has a wonderful smell but cannot be eaten, represents the Jew who carefully and precisely follows the mitzvahs, however does not study Torah itself. The arava, on the other hand, cannot be eaten nor has any aroma. It represents the Jew that neither studies the Torah or follows its mitzvahs. And the Rambam does not write much about the arava as it represents the Jew that is unaffiliated and unobservant. However, the Pesach still says, let them bind them together to create one. And even though they may not seem comparable or equivalent to each other, if you are missing just one of the four minim, it is not considered kosher. There is a story of an author who wanted to write a biography on the famous conductor Arthur Toscanini. He was one of the most acclaimed musicians of the early 20th century and was renowned for his photographic memory, relentless perfectionism, and his phenomenal ear for detail. One day, the author called Toscanini and asked him if they could meet the following night. The great conductor told him that he cannot meet the following night as he was planning to listen to a concert over radio of an orchestra that he himself has conducted the previous year. The author then asked if he can join him and discuss the concert after it was over. Toscanini agreed, but on one condition, that he was not to be disturbed during the concert. The following night, they got together and listened to the orchestra's performance. When it was finished, the author smiled and proclaimed, wow, that was magnificent. No, it wasn't, the great conductor answered. There were supposed to be 120 musicians, and amongst them, 15 violinists. However, only 14 were present. The author could not believe his ears, but did not dare question the great conductor. Nevertheless, he was intrigued and wanted to investigate and to verify if Toscanini was correct. The next morning, he called up the director of the orchestra and asked how many musicians were supposed to be in the orchestra and how many had actually shown up. The director replied to him, that there were supposed to be, as Toscanini said, 120 musicians. However, one of the 15 violinists called in sick and could not make the concert. The writer was in shock and could not believe his ears. How is it possible that Toscanini knew that one violinist was missing? That night, he returned to the great conductor and asked him how he was able to discern the missing violinist in the orchestra of 120 musicians. Toscanini answered with authority and said, There is a great difference between me and you. As a part of the general audience, everything sounds great to you. However, I, being the conductor, must know every sound that comes forth from the orchestra. And when I heard the concert, I noticed that some notes were missing, and I knew immediately that one violinist was missing. When we shake the lulav and esrik, it represents the many types of Jews that make up the Jewish nation. 
However, if we're missing just one, we are not considered complete. Because in God's eyes, we are all equal. And when we stand together, we are blessed and sanctified. As we say in the end of Shemona Esrei each day, Barchenu Avinu Kalonuk Echad. Our Father in Heaven blesses us when we are united. However, the Lubavitch Rebbe continues, that not only does the Lulav and Esrog represent unity with the Jewish people, but rather within our own selves as well. Because we are perfect imperfections. There are times when we are in tune with spirituality as a result of our dedication to God and His mitzvahs. However, there are also moments when we are out of touch with Hashem because of our misdeeds. And despite all this, it is our imperfections that complete us as human beings. Hashem is the grand conductor of the universe and orchestrates our lives every single second. And He is the one who created us perfectly imperfect, which allows that every moment of our lives it is possible to grow further in our relationship with God. That every junction we come across in our lives is part of God's master plan, something which we do not even have the slightest understanding of. However, if we grasp onto God, He gives us a glimpse of our true capabilities, which will motivate us to aim higher and reach further than we ever thought possible, maximizing our potential in this world. As we unite together this sukkah, first physically by being together in the sukkah, and then spiritually, by binding together the Arba Minim, we build the ultimate vessel for the blessings of God to shower upon us. We create the perfect opportunity for growth and advancement on both a communal and individual level, bringing us ever closer to celebrating Sukkot in the Beis Hamikdash and achieving the ultimate redemption. May you all have a joyous and meaningful Sukkot. Chag Sameach.